I'd like to talk a bit about hospitals as public buildings uh, with a civic role to play. I'm thinking about this at the moment because I really am concerned that in the rebuilding of our 19th century hospitals, that role of being a civic building has got lost. Now, Tommy's is a hospital in the right place, right hard there in the, in the centre of the capital. It, originally, it was founded as an infirmary of an Augustinian priory in the 12th century in Southwark, next to Guy's, pretty hard by Guy's. Um, in 1862, after a lot of resistance, the original site was compulsory purchased in favour of the Charing Cross Railway Company to build a new line to Greenwich. So, armed with their compensation, there was a lot of disagreement about the choice of a new site between those close to the city in Westminster and those further out at Blackheath on higher ground where the air was fresher. The governors, supported by Florence Nightingale, who just wanted to get on with it, finally chose a prominent site opposite the recently built Palace of Westminster. There's only about 20 years difference between the two. They wanted to be right at the centre of things, power, influence and patronage. Hospitals are important buildings and should be seen to be as important. The building of, of a new hospital on this site was a major event where, with its progress followed by the London Illustrated News week after week or fortnight after fortnight. It was... Um, It wasn't easily achieved. There wasn't a site there. Uh, first, the embankment had to be built and reclaimed from the marsh. So it started off by being a major effort. And I think this sort of shows the sort of significance of importance that was attached to it. The whole, the whole business of getting it built was very much in the public eye. 3,000 people attended the foundation stone lane. Uh, uh, by the Queen in 1868, three years after they had bought the site. And they built a special building all around it for, the, for, this, for this ceremony. And then I guess it's sort of specially drawn up to look even more important by the, uh, by the London Illustrated News. And then she was back again three years later uh, to open it with over 500 new beds. Now, the the, the point uh, that I want to draw to from this is that it was a major public building, a civic building, permeable by the public with arcades, streets, squares and gardens, equal to the Palace of Westminster. And that, this is what really is bothering me now. All over, all over Victorian Britain, in our cathedral cities and market towns, hospitals have been built as part of the fabric of the city centre along with the town hall, the railway station, the College of Further Education, the city library, museum and art gallery, all public buildings which gave richness to the city beyond the commercial activity. Uh, now, nowadays, the city hospital, I'm sure for all sorts of good reasons, like renewal and expansion, is being moved to the periphery of the city without any thought of its civic function. I'll leave that for a bit now, but I'd like to return to it. I'll, I'll, I'll now I'll talk a little bit about Evelina now. Evelina was a specialist paediatric hospital for the whole of south of England. Uh, it, has the same, it has the same function as uh, Great Ormond Street has on the north side of the river. The, build, the building itself, which <coughs> you can see there, marked above, uh, faces south and has long, uninterrupted views from the upper stories over the river, up upstream. From the other side, from Lambeth Palace, across Archbishop Gardens, uh, the building also stands out quite strongly with the, with, with the identified the London Eye behind it. Um, The strategy, the strategy for this hospital was, it, it's, only got it's only got 150 beds, which surprised me when we got the brief. I somehow thought there'd be many more beds in it. Because the main emphasis is in keeping, uh, in keeping children out of hospital beds uh, and treating them as day patients. So the, the bulk of this hospital is, is 
a series of outpatients departments which are attended uh, at, at daily or if you, if you need to if you need to stay uh, there's, there's, there's a hostel over the over the other side of the road uh, which, which which can be used but the main emphasis is on is on is on is on day and treatment so the party that we adopted for this building was to put the outpatients departments which are massive on, on, on the lower floors and you can read this I think in the in, in the way that the, the section is set up and then the wards and the, there are three of them or the possible fourth one uh, are set within this big conservatory which I'll talk about in a bit with looking down looking down into the conservatory and then out through the conservatory upstream And here, yes, you can see uh, that the, the, the ground floor is obviously the entrance floor uh, with, the, uh, with, with the main, with the main malpractice departments, things like uh, pharmacy uh, uh, and, and, and therapy treatment. Uh, up at the first floor, which is, which is an extension of the, uh, of the main outpatient's level, um, you've got medical daycare, uh, you, there are rooms for parents, rooms for staff, there's imaging, and uh, uh, outpatients, uh, renal treatment, and also cardiology. And above that uh, is, is, this, is this conservatory, which you can see, um, which is the main sort of social space of the hospital. And behind that are, are the, uh, the renal wards uh, with uh, inpatient kids on, on having dialysis. And above that, there are two, two more wards, uh, floors of wards. And then right at the very top, uh, where it says administration, is actually that kitted out as a ward, uh, where it's got all the services for a ward, and at present has been used for administration and may well form expansion. Um, now, the, arri the arrival here. Uh, ground floor. What, what you need to do with a large hospital, uh, which used to be very clear in its plan and circulation, but since the war has become a little bit confused, is try to establish a, uh, a, a clear and articulate and public thoroughfare for the whole thing. The hospital has already made a good start on at this end, and we've got up about as far as here, and in the middle, we've sort of hit a large... Uh, a CT scanning machine, which is on a huge concrete foundation and can't be moved for a year or two. When, when, uh, when, uh, when Thomas was originally built, it had a sort of perfectly clear route, which is, which is up here, running through there. That was, that was the route. The Lambeth Palace Road used to run straight up there and hit Westminster Bridge at that point. But in order to expand the hospital, uh, the whole site over here was colonised and the Lambeth Palace Road was pushed, pushed over one. It's sort of, on this way, it's sort of right over here. Now. So that's, that's actually confused a lot of things. Um, The, uh, you can see where Evelina is. It stretches across the site between the between the, between the main road route and the now present sort of Lambeth Palace Road, where uh, we have an entrance opposite all the bus stops. So the bus stops are moved to our entrance, um, and we have entrances at each end uh, as, as sort of part of a clear pattern of circulation. Um, this is a new. This is the end here. Is the, uh, this, is the, this is the end of this is the end of this route, which is here on the plan here, uh, and that's the other end, the bus stop end. And it, and and there's a there's there's a, uh, a foyer.